okay, I've gotten the request to do the whole process of uploading. I'm going to guess that it's Puppeteer. For this tutorial, we are going to put a Puppeteer instance on AWS Lambda, and you can obviously use this if you're not using Puppeteer. So I try to scrape, and this is for scraping, so you have a whole API endpoint that you can use to um, just call that and then get back the data. I try to use wherever I can, not Puppeteer, but obviously if you can use uh, AWS Lambda with Puppeteer, then you'll be set to do it without it. So we're going to go over the entire process because people have had questions about this. So we're going to go over the, the entire thing. This isn't very planned. I'm just kind of doing this off the cuff. So it's going to be a little bit long. So what we're going to do, yeah, is just create function. I'm going to call it test for YouTube. And then this is important here. I always do x8664 because if you use ARM64, you can't use that with Lambda, and that just causes a ton of headaches. ARM is cheaper, but if you ever want to switch your function, you're like, oh, it's not working um, just by using Fetch or Axios. I want to switch it to Puppeteer. Then you're going to pull your hair out. I know, because I don't have any left. You're going to pull your hair out trying to get it to work with ARM because it, it doesn't work with ARM. And um, that's the only thing you have to switch. So yeah, I always just use that setting. Then let's write the actual code here. So we're just gonna make a new directory, YouTube test uh, tutorial. Okay, so then we're gonna get a new terminal here, npm init, just everything, and then we have that package. And I always like to say module, because stuff is newer. Then you're gonna create an index.js. And then we're gonna import a bunch of different things. So I already have this thing that I use. And so for this example, we're just going to go ahead and use, we're going to, I'm going to show you by importing Puppeteer Extra, because why not? You know, if you're going to install Puppeteer, why not just use Puppeteer Extra? So we're going to have all of those here, and we need to upload, or we need to install a bunch of things. So with Puppeteer Extra, then I believe we are going to need Puppeteer Core and a Stealth Plugin Copy. And then we need the Spartacus Chromium to run Chromium on AWS. And since I'm installing all of the latest versions, I'm assuming that that we're good, but if we're not, then you're gonna to have to match up the Chromium version with your Puppeteer version. So if we run into an issue, then I will go over that. If we don't, I might just skip that. So then we have to write out like our Lambda function stuff. Uh, con, let's see, export const handler, yeah. And if you have GitHub Autopilot, I highly recommend it, and then it'll just autofill that for you. But this is what you need to do for a Lambda function. Also, if you're using TypeScript, the methods or the process is a little bit different. So yeah, I'm just sticking with JavaScript. Yeah, um, so we're gonna do a little try catch. So this is what I like to do every time. You do whatever you want, error at whatever. Message. I feel like I'm kind of like preparing a recipe. This is like my cook channel. 
so then we want to return 500 when it airs out, and I like to return error instead of message. And then we have to fetch something. I don't know what we're going to fetch, but uh, let's just say... Uh, function scrape. And I always like to do try catches to catch the errors. Error at scrape, not JS. Dummy. Uh, and then we have to import all of our puppeteer stuff. And to use locally, um, then this is what I have to do for Puppeteer. So I'm going to copy all that because for debugging purposes. Oops. So yeah, to use the Stealth plugin, then it's just Puppeteer Extra, use Stealth. This is for local purposes. So the executable path is where to find it locally. So I'm just using like the Google Chrome path, like where actual Google Chrome is. You have to figure that out, like where it is for you. And then this is for when we want to run it in Lambda, which I'll show that later. Get rid of that. And yeah, new page. And then this is important. So recently, then if you use the Stealth plugin, if you use Puppeteer Extra, the browser is not closing up appropriately or correctly. So if you so normally with Puppeteer you just do await browser dot close to close out the browser. But yeah lately that it's never getting to that for me. So you so to fix that you have to close all the pages first. So you get the pages and then to close them all then you say promise dot all yeah. No that's not Sometimes it is not like to do this page dot close. Pages dot map. Yeah, why do you not like to do this? Oh here. Sometimes GitHub Copilot man. So yeah, that's important. So where are we gonna go though? Where are we gonna scrape? Um hmm. Let's just scrape Jordan's site. So Jordan, my homeboy, obviously we don't need to use Puppeteer for this, but we're just showing you a little example. So this is his site, scrapes Secretary of State data, if you need that business verification API. So let's see if it works. And we could return the HTML or we could return H1s or something. So like const uh, data equals. Yeah, we need to we need to return something there. And then so for the successes, what I do is status code 200 body is JSON stringify data. And let's and we don't. If you wanted to pass in, say we wanted to pass some data like a parcel ID or a name or URL or something like that. And then what I like to do is make it a post request and get everything from the body. So if I wanted to get like a parcel ID, actually what I would do is body equals json.parse. So you have to parse that out first and then get like, uh, yeah, you can get the URL from the body if you wanted to pass that in as a uh, post request. Maybe I'll do that for you just to show you that as well. And the reason you wouldn't want to pass in, like you could just use query parameters. So you could just say URL equals like event dot query, query string parameters or something like that. But the problem is that the URL value right here will be like stringified or encoded and like the URI encoded or something like that. So I have found that it's just easier to use the body because you don't have to deal with any like encoding or decoding. You just grab it from the body. So maybe we'll just 
uh, go ahead and do that. Scrape URL. Still pass in the URL. And URL. And then if I want to run this locally, then I need to do, yeah. I guess we could scrape Google. So let's say we want to get the H1 from his site. What is ng content, Jordan? App Secretary of State. Whoa. That's cool. That's not like a regular HTML element. I wonder what he's using. That's pretty cool. Get the H1. This is what I love about GitHub Copilot is I can just tell it something like that. Then we're, we're going to return H1. And let's see if that works. So to test this thing, we're just going to run no.index.js. Mm. Oh, I need to log it. Let's see. Log. Uh, just log the data. Boom! Let's go. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't even uh, check to use this or anything. So this is a cool feature that actually Jordan told me about. Shout out to Jordan again. That normally you use true here for headless, but this new version of Puppeteer um, so to m make websites think that you're using a headful puppeteer, he headful, um, browser, which is like what you, me, we normally use. It's a browser that actually shows up and then you want to use true. So with a little, you probably just want to always use true because, um, that's a little bit better to get around the security that websites have that can tell that you're a bot. So we need to get rid of this and let us try this on Lambda. So we have these files here. We need to zip them up first to put them on Lambda. And I have this, uh, what would you call it, script that I run. That I actually got from Jordan. I had to modify it. A little bit because he's on a Windows. Yuck. So yeah, the script. And you can just go to like your finder and zip it up by just selecting on files and then compressing. I'll include this script though, because it gets rid of if you have git, gets rid of those. I don't know, it's kind of nice. YouTube, like test, tutorial. So then you can just run npm run zip, and it'll zip it up for you. Jordan has this nice method of pushing it to a, a bucket, and then that bucket will update a Lambda function, but I haven't figured out, I haven't spent time to figure out how to do that. So, okay, we actually need an S3 bucket. So if you're using Puppeteer, then it's going to be too big to just host on Lambda on the function. So you ha have to upload the code to S3 first and then put that in Lambda. So here we're going to upload that zip upload and then I think we already have oh yeah functions over here though. and then you upload from s3 whereas if we didn't have puppeteer we can just upload the zip directly and configuration is going to be important so for lambda we have to bump up the memory if you don't have lambda or sorry puppeteer then you don't but for puppeteer 
I usually put it up to 20,000. And then Puppeteer takes longer. So if you're going to use an API gateway, which is what we're going to do, then the longest is 30 seconds. So I'm just going to say 30 seconds. But if you use the AWS SDK, then it's like a few minutes. So if your script takes a long time, then you won't be able to use the API gateway. You have to use it through the, um, the SDK. But anyway, we're going to set it to 30 seconds because it takes, because Puppeteer takes a long time. Then let's see if the upload is done. And I know what you're thinking. Wow, that's a lot of tabs. Yes, it is. And where's my YouTube test? Can anyone see it? Yeah. So we copy S3 URI code, upload from Amazon S3. Ba, 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 ba. And did I comment? Yep, that out. And then we are going to, like I said, create an API for this from API Gateway, create new API, security, open, add. You can tell, can you tell that I've done this before? It's been like a million, do this a gazillion times a day. Copy link address, and we are going to use Postman. And so we need to enter a URL. So post request, body, raw, and why they default to text is just beyond me. So we're gonna pass in the URL. And the URL is uh, Cobalt Intelligence. Oh, and we're gonna run it and see what happens. Dun, 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 this moment of truth. Mm, not looking good. Oh, boom, it worked. Let's go. Let's try another site. So this is a site that I created a little bit ago. Lemon Drops. Oh, we should try my site. The web scripting, ooh, hmm, didn't work. So if you wanna see what's going on, then you go monitor, view CloudWatch. So this is like the logs. We can tell what's going on in the Lambda function. We can log stuff out. Here is this thing. Hmm, nothing logged here because I didn't, unfortunately. I just log, this is probably the log here. That's the H1 though, right? Huh, that's weird. If we do my website, the web scraping guy. Oops. That is super strange. Hmm. Okay, get county property data. Uh, not sure why I got rid of that for the web scraping guy. Get county property did. Sweet. Oh, who is that good looking guy? Yeah, not sure why it doesn't work there. But yeah, if you wanted to add additional logs to figure out why it's not working, then you could do that. But yeah, info get county property data shows up right there. So yeah, if you want to debug your Lambda function, then this is where the logs show up. And uh, that's it. You have a successfully working... Lambda function takes 12 seconds, so yeah, it takes a lot of time. Oh, I didn't know you could see all this here. Very cool. So yeah, wherever you can, you don't want to use it. And um, yeah, if you want to pass in parameters, that's how you do it. And yeah, if you need anything else scraped, then go to yeah, the site here, the webscrapingguy.com. I think I'm actually going to change this website, but it'll redirect you either way to whatever my new site's going to be book a call and we can get something scraped for you or if you need uh, Lambda functions set up, whatever uh, you need in the scraping realm, then let me know. And hope this is helpful.